Hello, my friends. My name is Gabe, and I founded Cascadian Water way back in 1994. This is the third video of a three-part series covering common DIY tips to save you time and money. Now, before you get started, read the manual. I can't emphasize that enough. And there's a manual in every system. It's detailed. It has lots of pictures, and it'll help tremendously. Now, if you don't have your copy of the manual or you want to preview one before you get your system, I'll put a link down below to download it. And also, there's a link on our website at CascadianWater.com. Next, the first thing I want you to know is that there is going to be plumbing involved. You need to be competent. You need to be confident you can take plumbing apart and put plumbing back together again. And you need to be able to turn the water off to your whole house if you're installing a POE, point of entry water treatment system like this one, or at least to a specific area if you're gonna install a point of use or POU system, an instance like that would be say under the sink for your kitchen sink and your ice water and things like that. So you need to be able to plumb and you need to be able to control the water. Since plumbing can vary greatly depending on the age of your home and the location of your home, uh, different codes and different practices and things like that, I'm going to focus on connecting your Cascadian water treatment system. See video two of this three-part series for where to install your system. Now before you get started connecting your system, you should make sure you have all of the components that were supposed to be with your system when we shipped it to you. And the way you do that is you go to the manual in your box and you open up the back of it and there's a, a two pages of pictures that show everything that's included with your system. What's not included with your system are things like piping and valves and uh, Teflon tape to seal your joints anything like that. We just don't supply anything like that. Only the system itself. Also in your manual, you turn it to page uh, six and there's a basic installation diagram that you can reference as to how the bypass assembly is to be assembled. Now, this is a representation. Not all systems are gonna look like that. Even here in my own house, it doesn't look like that. But the main things to know are that you have a bypass assembly, which is water in, water out, and a valve in between them to control the flow. Also, another important aspect is to be able to disconnect this system from the plumbing. Now in the manual, we show unions. Here, there's a new kind of fitting that has a, a turnable joint on the end it's a, it's a female that connects to the plumbing and the turnable joints, all you got to do is unscrew those and you can pull the system off should you need to do it. Now let's talk a little bit about the bypass assembly. The bypass assembly is critical. A lot of people will try to skip that, but it is required by code in most, if not all jurisdictions. It's required by code because the, the code says a water treatment system cannot stop water from flowing to the house. Imagine if there was a fire when there was something wrong with your system and you had no water going to the house. That would be a really bad deal. So the, there is a reason for, for the code stipulating that, that a, a three valve bypass is required. But let's talk about things from a practical point of view. With a three valve bypass, it's a lot easier to install your system and a lot easier to service your system. You won't have to shut off the water to your house when you're changing your filters. And if something should go wrong when you're changing your filters, you got water. You don't, you don't have to have no water until you get the problem resolved. So it's just a lot easier. So after building your bypass assembly, the next step is to determine the flow of water in your system. Where's your water coming from? Is it coming from the left-hand side or is it coming from the right-hand side? And the easiest way to do that is turn the bypass valve into the off position and then open one valve or the other 
and whichever valve has water flowing out of it, that's your inlet valve. And then that's important because the brackets mount in only one way. They mount to the wall, they screw to the wall. But these systems can be flipped around so you can turn them so that water can come in the left or in the right, depending on your situation. And to be sure, there's arrows on top of these inlet and outlet indicating which flow, which direction the flow is through this system. So you want to put the inlet on the, on the system, on the cap, match it with the inlet from your plumbing. Once you've determined which is your inlet, uh, you're, you're free to uh, close your inlet and outlet valves and open your bypass valve so that water will flow to the house while you're finishing your installation. And this is a good time to take a, a permanent marker and mark your, your valves. Uh, inlet, I just put in on here and out on here and BP for bypass on here so that if somebody does happen to pick up the instructions and they're trying to figure out what's going on, it's just much easier. So after you've mounted the bracket and you go to install the cap in the right orientation, just use the screws that we provide in your package to mount the cap to the bracket. Once you've got your valves, your bypass assembly installed, and you have your cap mounted to your bracket and your bracket mounted to the wall, the last step to do, or near last step to do, uh, is to connect your plumbing to the water treatment system. And we provide one inch female national pipe thread fittings on our systems, our point of entry systems like this one. And you need to connect to that with whatever plumbing works for your house in your situation, you need to be able to adapt to one inch female national pipe thread fittings. Now, to make the seal, to make the joint here and seal so that it won't leak, only use Teflon tape. Do not use pipe dope. Pipe dope will cause leaks. It won't seal very good. Some people will say, okay, I'm gonna be extra cautious and I'm gonna put uh, Teflon tape on, this, on the um, threads and then I'm gonna put pipe dope on top of that doesn't work. You might get away with it sometimes, but it's not trustworthy. It's not fail safe. Just use Teflon tape. Wrap it on nice and tight, a few turns, wrap it from the, from the outside edge, the end, towards the middle, overlapping, just like normal, like it needs to be done, at good plumbing practices, and uh, make your joint. Now remember, you put a union in, so if it leaks, you can take it back out take the Teflon tape off, put new Teflon tape, a little bit more, a little bit closer wraps, a little bit more overlapping, a little bit more, it doesn't take a huge amount. And then do it again until when you put it together, it doesn't leak. Caution, do not over tighten because you got a little leak. Don't give it that extra twist. It's not needed and there's a high likelihood that you will, you will destroy the cap. Um, because it'll, it'll wedge it out. Uh, I, I see all kinds of things. Um, and when it wedges out and stretches, then it's impossible to seal. That's not covered by warranty. And I don't want you to have to buy a whole new assembly just because you didn't properly seal that connection to your system. After connecting your system or plumbing to the system, install your bottom drain valves. Every one of our point of entry systems comes with a bottom drain valve. Now these are special valves. They have British standard pipe threads. So you need to use the components that we included with your system. And you need to install it just like the diagram on page three in your manual shows. You got some white washers that go into the included nickel plated brass valve and then the valve screws to the nipple on the bottom of the housing and then you screw a nipple into the bottom of the valve. And that nipple 
You can put a hose on it and run it to drain if you have one or you want to, or you can run it to a bucket. Say you have it installed high and you want to run it to a bucket, you can do that. But it's, it's really simple to do, but it's very important to use those white washers that come with your system and don't try to use another valve. Use the one that comes with your system. When you're done installing the bottom drain valves, close them. Close your inlet valve, your outlet valve, and your bottom drain valve or valves. The next thing you're going to want to do is fill your system with water and make sure you got no leaks. And to do that, start with the valves closed and then take a screwdriver and look for your air vent valve. There's, there's one for each sump and just turn it to the left and open it up a little bit. There's a little hole in the side of the valve and there's an o-ring that makes the seal but when you unscrew it a little bit it, it releases that o-ring from the seal and air can then go past that o-ring and out the little hole in the side of the, the cap and then you open up just a little bit your inlet valve to start letting air or water into the sump and then that'll push air out of the sump and do that for both if you have two uh, filter assemblies and when it's full water will start leaking out that air vent valve that's okay that's why you got a bucket under there and then you just take your screwdriver and you close the air vent and then you can go ahead and open the inlet valve all the way and pressurize your system. Check up for leaks, repair any leaks that you find. Then it's time to put your filters in. And for that, I'm gonna ask you to look at another video that's not part of this series, but it's just changing your filters. And changing your filters is the same as putting the filters in for the first time. So I will put a link to that video down below. And this concludes the three video series that discusses common DIY tips to save you time and money. Now, if for any reason you change your mind and you decide you're not gonna install your own system, please know that any licensed plumber can install it for you. Also, we have a growing list of experienced installers at installmyfilter.com. So please consider going to installmyfilter.com and working with an experienced Cascading Water Systems installer. Now, life's short. Enjoy your water. Thank you.